The advent of personal computers as common consumer devices can be traced back to the microcomputer evolution of the 70s. Compared to mainframe computers that require operating staff and time-sharing systems that divide processor power among many users, a personal computer is designed for exclusive individual use. The affordability of these personal computers came about as the cost of microprocessors plummeted. Early personal computers or microcomputers were commonly sold in kits, only available in limited numbers, and mainly caught the interest of hobbyists and technicians. The term personal computer was first mentioned in a New York Times article dated November 3, 1962, where John W. Motchley envisioned a future where everyone could operate a personal computer. This vision was captured by Hewlett Packard in 1968 when they marketed their powerful computing genie as the new Hewlett. Packard 9000 100 a personal computer. However, the extreme nature of the ad caused it to be replaced by a more subdued one for the HP 9000 100 a programmable calculator. The term personal computer gained more recognition over the next seven years. By the magazine's first issue referred to its readers as being in the personal computing field. While creative computing defined a personal computer as a solo system with enough processing power and storage to meet individual need. In 1977, the Apple II, Pete 2001, and Trees, 80, referred to as the 1977 Trinity by Byte Magazine, entered the market. The Apple II and Pete 2001 were marketed as personal computers, while the Qi S80 was promoted as a household microcomputer useful for tasks like personal financial management. By 1979, more than half a million microcomputers had been sold, embedding the concept of personal computers in the minds of the younger generation. Essentially, the mass market journey of personal computers began in 1977 with the release of microcomputers, although mainframe and minicomputers had been used as single-user systems much earlier. From mid-1960s onwards, computer usage saw a shift towards more interactive forms. This was highlighted by the advent of time-sharing systems where a single computer processor was shared among multiple users via different terminals, a practice especially prevalent within business, science, and engineering sectors. A novel trend towards individual computer usage was sparked by students at esteemed educational institutions such as Carnegie Mellon University and MIT, who had access to some of the first computers. Their experiments with applications laid the foundational groundwork for today's personal computer. Early minicomputers such as the Link, PDEP, 8, VAX, and others from manufacturers like Digital Equipment Corporation, DEE, Data General, and Prime Computer can be viewed as the initial personal computers. Despite being expensive and large, they were comparatively smaller, cheaper, and easier to use than mainframe computers of that era, making them ideal for individual labs and research projects. The minicomputer Xerox, Alto ushered in a revolutionary phase in personal computer development with its bitmapped high-resolution screen, graphical user interface, large storage capacities, mouse, and specialized software. At the same time, significant advancements were happening at the backdrop. Notably, Vannevar Bush's 1945 essay, As We May Think, tackled the growing issue of data storage and retrieval while Sri researcher Douglas Engelbart Zhao Dropping demonstration in 1968, colloquially known as the mother of all demos, showcased future staples of the 21st century work life, including email, hypertext, word processing, video, conferencing, and the mouse. Though early personal computer minicomputers utilized integrated circuit technology and were much smaller and affordable compared to other computers, they lacked a microprocessor. This meant they were still large and challenging to manufacture. However, with the commercialization of computer on a chip, the production cost of a computer plummeted the complex functions that previously required several expensive circuit boards were now achievable through a single integrated circuit enabling mass production. Further improvements in solid-state memory technology replaced the costly, large, and power-hungry magnetic core memory in prior computers, bringing us closer to the modern computer era. In the wake of the introduction of the Intel 4004 in 1972, Microprocessor costs underwent a speedy decline. Radio, Electronics and American Electronics Magazine in 1974, elucidated on the Mark 8 computer kit deriving its core from the Intel 8008 processor. Popular Electronics Magazine in the subsequent year shed light on a kit with its foundation on the Intel 8080. 
a processor that was somewhat more powerful and user-friendly, in spite of being limited to a few hundred bytes of initial memory size and no software availability. Altair 8800 witnessed remarkable sales. However, on account of it being substantially more affordable than the contemporaneous Intel development system, it was picked up by firms intent on developing microprocessor control for their products. The primitive Microsoft product was a 4 kilobyte paper tape basic interpreter, aiding users in developing programs in a higher level language. The simple alternative was to manually assemble machine code that could be loaded directly into the microcomputer's memory using a front panel comprised of toggle switches, push buttons, and LED displays, however, after a brief period, the preferred human's machine interface was I, terminal, resulting in front panels becoming obsolete. The prevailing point being that in spite of speculation, the computer or the brain is yet to display signs of aiding common people in their financial calculations. Between 1948 and 1957, IBM 610 was developed by John Lentz at the Watson Lab at Columbia University as the personal automatic computer. Pass, and introduced by IBM as the 610 Auto Point in 1957. Given its high price tag of $55,000, a mere 180 units were produced due to its slow speed, despite handling floating, point arithmetic naturally. A more historical mention goes to the Simon, a project developed by Edmund Berkeley, showcasing the first instance of constructing a simple automatic digital computer for educational purposes and presented in a series of 13 articles in the Radio Electronics magazine, starting from October. 1950 in actuality, its ALUU only had 2 bits and the total memory was 12 bits. 2 bits x6, in 1950, it got sold for $600. The Ali 9003 is one of a series of mainframe computers developed by Olivetti starting in the late 1950s. The first prototype was created in 1957 and designed completely with transistors for high performance by a small group of researchers under the supervision of Mario Chacho, 1924-1961. It was the first solid-state computer designed and entirely produced in Italy. The knowledge obtained from this project was applied later to develop the successful Programma 101 electronic calculator. The Lynx, designed in 1962, was an early laboratory computer crafted for interactive use with laboratory instruments. Some of the initial Lynx computers were put together from kits of parts by the end users themselves. In the 1970s, the world saw the emergence of devices resembling modern personal computers, largely thanks to the Datapoint 2200. Launched in 1970 by CC, now known as Datapoint, the Datapoint 2200 was a trailblazer, featuring a Sirkri screen, keyboard, programmability, and program storage, all consolidated within a case approximately the size of an IBM Selectric typewriter. Its PU is composed of roughly 100 Tau logic components. Intel and Texas Instruments were commissioned to develop a single chip's PU, mirroring the functionality of the Datapoint 2200 standard CPU. Despite delays and bug-ridden initial versions, a deal was struck allowing Intel to sell the processor as their own product, resulting in the creation of the Intel 8008 commonly recognized as the first 8-bit microprocessor. The features of the Datapoint 2200 heavily influenced the architecture of the 8008, which eventually evolved into the Zadie and the 8080, laying the groundwork for IBM-compatible processors still in use today. The Kenbach 1 heralded by the Computer History Museum as the world's first personal computer, was also born in this era. Devised by John Blankenbaker of Kenback Corporation in 1970 and sold starting in 1971. The Kenback, one offered education and programming principles, albeit without the capacity to run application programs with only 256 bytes of memory and an 8-bit word size, input and output were limited to lights and output were limited to lights and switches. Meanwhile, in France, two former engineers of the Intertechnique company established R2 in order to market their Intel 8008-based microcomputer. This system, engineered to automate hygrometric measurements, ran at 500 cz, included 16b of memory, and was priced at 8,500 francs, approximately $1,300 us hence. The birth of personal computing was a global phenomenon influenced by many inventions and inventors leading to the advanced systems we witness today. In 1978, EA2 was integrated into Group Bull, which continued producing microcomputers. Nevertheless, these were primarily used in specialized sectors such as highway toll gates, 
rather than entering the more broad-based personal computer market. Microcomputers were active in these niche markets until 1992. Pioneering the new generation of computing technology was the Xerox Alto, developed in 1973 at Xerox Parts. This machine was the first to possess a mouse, a graphical user interface GUI, and a desktop metaphor. Concepts initially introduced by Douglas Engelbart at International League Xerox also heralded the era of personal computing and was a turning point in information technology as it would be known. Today, eight years later, Xerox Corporation launched the commercial Xerox Star Workstation, offering unprecedented technologies now commonplace in modern computing such as bit, map display, Windows based guy, Ethernet networking, file servers, print servers, and email. Around the same time, Dr. Paul Friedel, leading a team at the EBM Los Gatos Scientific Center, developed the prototype SCAMP, Special Computer L Machine Portable. SCAMP was the first single-user portable computer, emulating an IBM 1130-minute computer, thus earning recognition as the world's first personal computer by PC Magazine in 1983. EBM unveiled the 5,100 desktop computer in 1975, which was essentially an evolution of SCAMP. The 5100 series continued with the announcement of the larger 5110 in 1978, and despite not being a direct descendant, the architecture influenced the introduction of the PDC designated as the IBM 5150 in 1981. Affordable, user-friendly, personal computers, as we know them, became possible with the advent of the single-chip microprocessor. The Altair 8800, produced by electronics kit supplier Mites, hit the sweet spot between cost and performance in 1975, therefore, is often credited as the first truly personal computer due to unexpected high demand. MIT sold the design after shipping about 10,000 kits. The Altair, an early computer model, shifted the landscape of the technology industry. Though these pioneering machines were notoriously difficult to operate, partially due to the lack of an embedded operating system, Operating an Altair was often an intricate process that required users to manually program the machine to initiate the computer. Users would frequently operate an attachment connecting the computer to a cassette tape reader. However, later iterations of such systems streamlined this process with integrated bootstrap codes, and the machine subsequently came to be linked with the original CPM operating system, primarily relayed via floppy disks. The Altair, with these novel interventions, ignited the birth of microcomputers and computer kits, setting a wave of small-scale business computers into motion by the late 1970s. These machines were primarily built using Intel 8080, Zilog Zadie, and Intel 8085 microprocessor chips, mostly running on the CPM-80 operating system developed by Gary Kildall at Digital Research. This system became the first mass, accepted microcomputer operating system among diverse hardware manufacturers, with several leading software packages like WordStar and Debase I being written for it. Aside from initializing an entirely new market, the Altair also proved that the microprocessor had drastically minimized the cost and complexity of constructing microcomputers, to the extent that any interested parties could build their own. Networks of these hobbyists, such as the Homebrew Computer Club, Etch Key and Silicon Valley significantly influenced the evolution of today's personal computers. However, members of these groups voiced concerns that despite declining costs, microcomputers would never be adopted widely unless they were delivered as pre-assembled units. The Soul 20, a result of this need for comprehensive systems, was the first computer of its kind to combine a keyboard, keypad display card, memory, and ports into one cohesive unit, with an approximate 10,000 units sold. The Soul 20 was the first all, in one system familiar to the ones used today. Several additional machines of 1977, including the Exidy Sorcerer, North Star Horizon, Chromenko Z2, and Heathkit Height, also had a substantial impact on the hobbyist community. The competition to launch the most successful commercial personal computers by 1976 led to the arrival of three machines in 1977, the Apple II Pet 2001 and Trays. 80. Notably, Apple I was designed by Steve Wozniak, a regular attendee of the Homebrew Computer Club. This model, along with Apple as a company, plays a significant role in computer industry history, giving rise to the dynamic technology-centered world we inhabit today. Despite initially inferior sales due to its higher price and basic features, 
The Apple II, released in the late 1970s, eventually outperformed other computers in the market in terms of longevity and cumulative sales, with over 4 million units sold by the time it ceased production in 1993. Competing with it was the Commodore PET, considered the first personal computer ever designed by tech innovator Chuck Peddle with two memory size options. Fork Ben 8B. The PET combined various computer components in a single metal case. Although successful, the tiny keyboard of the Commodore Pete received criticism leading to future upgrade versions with larger keyboards and data storage outside of the case. As compared to the Apple II and Commodore Pete, the PET was the least successful, selling under 1 million units another competitor was Tandy Corporation's Trears. 80, later known as Model I, which designed the motherboard and keyboard as a single unit. Assisted by Tandy's more than 3,000 Radio Shack stores, the EAE at TES, 80 had a widespread distribution and support network, giving it an edge over both Apple and Commodore. The later Oldo's operating system incorporated enhanced features such as double-sided 80 track floppy drive support, disk basic with overlays and background program support, and device independent data redirection. Notwithstanding, the Model I had its share of shortcomings, notably failing to meet Fifi regulations on radio interference and experiencing spontaneous reboots and repeated keystrokes. Similar technical issues were not uncommon with early microcomputers by 1981. Tandy stopped the production of Model I as the models ISII and II are already in production. Meanwhile, Japan's technology industry also marked this era with their prominent trio of machines known as the 8-bit Gosanki, featuring the Hitachi Basic Master, Sharp MZ, 80 Key, and the next PC, 8001. These machines were the forerunners in a series of 8-bit computers from each manufacturer. In an editorial in Byte magazine in January 1980, the arrival of off-the-shelf personal computers was heralded. A desirably specified personal computer was considered to encompass 60 fork of memory, approximately 500 bytes of online mass storage, a proficiently designed computer architecture, a video terminal featuring upper and lower case display, a printer, and high-level languages. Companies like Radio Shack, Commodore, and Apple were leading manufacturers, accounting for the most part of the half-million microcomputers in existence, sparking a boom and consequent implosion in the home computers market in early 1980. Atari Inks popular for its arcade games and the highly successful Atari VC's game console, foresaw the limitations in the VC's market life. Anticipating competition, Atari took the initiative and began work on a technically superior console design. Standing out from the crowd, the Atari systems had unmatched high processing powers. However, despite its remarkable start, they were no match for Commodore's aggressive approach when it introduced the Commodore 64 in 1982. Efforts were made to enhance the Atari models, but it wasn't enough to secure a dominant market position. Simultaneously, in Britain, Sinclair Research LD, founded by Sir Clive Sinclair, emerged onto the scene in the 70s. Initially quiet, the company saw a resurgence in 1976, marking Sinclair's return to his commercial endeavors. By 1980, Sinclair plunged into the home computer market with the incredibly affordable Zex80, giving UK consumers a taste of personal computing. In 1982, the Zig Spectrum made its debut. The model became a national favorite, challenging big names like Commodore and British Amstrad. Pushed by its successful run, Sinclair Research launched the Metalab Research Center to further explore cutting, edge technological advancements. Nonetheless, failures of their Sinclair Kale computer and the TV80 caused financial setbacks by 1985, ultimately leading Sinclair to sell their computer product rights and the brand to Amstrad today. Sinclair Research remains active, driven by Sir Clive Sinclair's continuous innovation. Key product launches from Sinclair included the ready-built Zex80 home computer, the renamed Sinclair Computers Lite-D, the budget-friendly Zex80, one in the more advanced Zex Spectrum, the delayed Sinclair Cool, and upgraded models like the Zex Spectrum and the Zex Spectrum 120i. Continuous effort to provide more advanced user-friendly technology to the masses. Meanwhile, another heavyweight, Texas Instruments, decided to foray into the home computer market with the TIE 99.4. Being the first home computer based on a 16-bit microprocessor, it was a step ahead in the race on paper. Moreover, Texas Instruments' vast cash reserves and development capabilities seemed to set the stage for a competitive showdown in the home computer market landscape. 
understanding they couldn't contend with the vibrant screens of rivals such as Apple II and Atari. Commodore introduced the budget-friendly VIX-20 in 1980, an attempt to conquer the home market. Despite its inferior screen display and minuscule 5 KB memory, its economical price led to millions of units sold. Later, in 1982, Commodore International launched the best-selling personal computer of all time. The Commodore 64, with 17 million units rolling off the shelves, its name reflected its 64 KB of RAM, and it was powered by a unique 6510 microprocessor. At this stage, the BBC entered the tech world, keen to promote computer literacy with a standardized small computer. They selected the Acorn Proton model and re-engineered it into the BBC Micro, which, despite its hefty price tag and scarce appeal in the commercial market, sold about 15 million units with the help of ample marketing and a plethora of programs. Acorn then went on to develop the ARM Acorn Risk Machine, processor adopted by numerous products including the iPhone and Fugaku, a leading supercomputer. Meanwhile, as the personal computer market began to rival the size of the global potato chip market, other companies grappled with falling prices. In particular, Texas Instruments and Atari both had models retailing at $349 and Radio Shack's color computer at $379 nevertheless. Commodore managed to cut the VIC-20 price down to only $199 and Commodore 64 to a mere $499. Commodore's aggressive pricing strategies stemmed from a previous dispute with Texas Instruments over calculators in which Texas Instruments undersold its own product causing Commodore to lose its share in the calculator market. To avoid a replay of this, Commodore secured its chip supply by purchasing most technology in 1976. The company then initiated a price war in the early 1980s, sparking a crash in the tech sector prices. By 1983, Commodore was selling the 64 for as little as $200, managing to still turn a profit due to their secured component supply and control over pricing. The pricing brawl saw other companies join with Atari, dropping its Atari 800 price to $165, Texas Instruments selling the 99.4 for $99 and the proposed 99.2 model, designed to sell at the same price a catastrophic blow for Texas Instruments whose 99 had sold for $400 in 1980 type, millions of dollars in losses. This self-destruct pattern of price slashing in the tech industry was unprecedented and had retailers astonished with one executive stating, I've been in retailing 30 years and I have never seen any category of goods get on a self-destruct pattern like this. Between the late 1970s and early 1990s, Japan's personal computer industry was primarily driven by homegrown products. NEC emerged as a leading player post the introduction of the CE-1001 in 1979, maintaining its position with the launch of the 8-bit CE-88 and 16 bit PC-98 series in the 1980s. Rivals such as Sharp MZ and Hitachi Basic Master posed early competition, with this being heightened by the arrival of the 8-bit Fujitsu M7, Sharp Axone, Mix, and 62 and the 16-bit Femtowns and Sharp X68000 series. Several of these systems found a market in Europe, particularly the Mech series. A distinguishing factor between early Western and Japanese systems were the higher display resolutions supported by the latter a necessity for handling Japanese tech. As early as the 1980s, Japanese computers were incorporating Yamaha F-Synthesis soundboards for superior audio quality. A significant usage of these computers was in video game creation, even though only a small fraction of these games made their way outside Japan by 1999. Next, TC-988 emerged as the top-selling Japanese personal computer with over 18 million units sold, Meanwhile, EBM launched the EBMC in August 1981 in response to the success of the Apple II. The CC mirrored the open card, based architecture of the Apple I and S100 systems. The IBMC, initially just offering an audio cassette for external storage, saw the addition of a 10 me hard drive in place of one of its two floppy disks with the release of the PC-X in 1983. The IBM PC predominantly featured an operating system based on Gary Kildow's key P, CD DOS. Time Magazine's declaration of the home computer as machine of the year in 1982 underscored the impact of the Apple II and IBMC. The IBM C X, a progression from the original C design introduced in 1983, came with more card slots, no support for the cassette, and an optional 10 gb hard drive, although the 614 gb memory limit remained constant. 
Later versions allowed greater expansion. Several companies tried to produce computers that could operate Mrs. Do's and associated programs, owing to its availability as a standalone product. However, many of these early computers, like the Act Apricot, DC Rainbow 100, Hewlett Packard Ape, 150, Sequel Chameleon, and more, found limited success as they necessitated a tailored MS DOS version and were incompatible with programs intended for IBM's hardware compact, was the pioneer in designing. Truly, EBMC compatible machines, closely followed by other manufacturers. Since the EBMC utilized common integrated circuits and had a non patented card slot design, the pivotal breakthrough came when the BIOS software embedded in RIAD. Only memory got reverse engineered. This ignited the floodgate for IBM C mockups or PC clones. EBM's decision to quickly enter the personal computer market amid Apple's early success led them to releasing a product that was easily replicable, which severely undermined their market dominance in retrospect. IBM played a key role in establishing the default standard for hardware architecture among various manufacturers. The collateral damage of EBM's hasty move was shockingly beneficial for Microsoft a software company that was now the universal supplier of operating systems and utilities to all Cs, including IBM's authentic models and the PIC clones. Though IBM introduced the personal computer at in 1984, built around the significantly faster Intel 80286 microprocessor, it faced compatibility issues with the earlier models and its operating system. Amstos couldn't capitalize on these improvements. Moving forward, the PK bus was named Industry Standard Architecture. ISA, with peripheral component interconnect, C, released in 1992, aiming to replace ISA. Even though the Visa local bus, Volv, and extended ESA were also replaced by CE, the majority of post-1992 486-based systems featured a Visa local bus video card providing a cost-effective high-speed interface for consumer systems until PC availability increased in 1994. Despite the back-and-forth competition amongst hardware manufacturers, 1983 saw Apple releasing the Lisa, the first mass-marketed microcomputer with a graphical user interface. Equipped with a Motorola 68000 microprocessor and a series of other notable features, Lisa's commercial success was curtailed by its slow operating speed and steep price. While less than a hit at launch, the Apple Macintosh established itself as a highly successful personal computer over time, largely thanks to the advent of desktop publishing in 1985, achieved through a collaboration between Apple and Adobe. This revolution offered users the LaserWriter printer and the Aldus PageMaker. From this point, numerous Macintosh models, including the Macintosh Plus and II, hit the market with resounding success during Steve Jobs' absence from Apple, making the series a significant competitor for eBeam until the early 1990s. In Commodore's arena, Geos ran on the Commodore 64 and 128, and later on CAUs with DOS. Notably, its suite of GUI applications could be operated with a mouse or joystick. Commodore's advanced product range embodied by the Amiga platform ran a GUI operating system by default and set the standard for future personal computers with its innovative graphics and sound capabilities by hailed it as the first multimedia computer so far ahead of its time that almost nobody could fully articulate what it was all about. In 1985, Atari ST powered by the Motorola 68000 microprocessor debuted with the first color guy through Digital Research's gym. Two years later, Acorn unveiled the Archimedes range of superior home computers in Europe and Australasia. These computers, which had a GIOS called Arthur and were powered by a 32-bit ARMRISC processor, used tri-button mice. Significant to understanding the history of computer technology was the transition from an IBM-led market to a more open one, which began to take shape between 1986 and 1987. The launch of the 32-bit Intel 80386 microprocessor in 1986 and the subsequent release of Compaq Desk Pro 386, the first 386, the first 386, based PC compatible, marked this turning point. EBM's counter came a year later with the IBM Personal System 2 series, but its proprietary nature failed to gather much traction instead. PC clones started to dominate, pushing out other makers like Commodore International and Atari. By using older, cheaper technology like the 8088 CPU and employing a direct-to-customer sales strategy, they were able to price these systems just under the magic $1,000 price point. 
The picture of the evolving computer market of the 1990s would be incomplete without a mention of the Next Station workstation, launched in 1990, pegged by Steve Jobs as the interpersonal. Computer, the Next Station, sought to be a computer for the 1990s and was a scaled-down version of its predecessor. The Next Computer, despite its groundbreaking use of object-oriented programming, it was a commercial failure, leading to Next discontinuing its hardware operations in 1993. In 1992, at the Comdex, EBM launched its popular ThinkPad range, categorized as Series 300, 500, and 700, reportedly to align with the status symbols of the BMW car range. The 300 was aimed at budget consumers. The 500 was aimed at budget consumers. The 500 was the high-end product. This model rang true until the late 1990s, when the T-Series was rolled out as replacements for the 600 and 700 series. Thus, the original 3, 5, and 7 series became a 3, 7 series became a 3, 7. By the mid-1990s, rivals like Amiga, Commodore, and Atari fell out of competition due to fierce competition from IBM C clones and low prices. Other previous competitors, Sinclair and Amstrad, left the computer market entirely. Amid lesser competition, Dell flourished with high profits, primarily due to their introduction of low-cost systems for consumers and business markets. Selling directly to customers, Dell became the world's largest computer manufacturer, surpassing Compaq, a position it held until October 2006. In 1994, Apple debuted its Power Macintosh series, comprising high-end professional desktop computers, targeting desktop publishing and graphic designers. Rather than continuing with the Motorola 68 architecture, these new computers incorporated the new Motorola PowerPC processors from the AIM Alliance despite having a low market share. The Macintosh became the default choice for creative professionals, especially in graphics and publishing. Acorn Computers also launched its RISC-C series of high-end desktop computers in 1994. In 2005, the widely adopted ARM Cortex, 8E, the first Cortex design was released for use in consumer devices. The ARM-based processor became utilized in the Raspberry Pi, an affordable single-board computer. Due to the rise in sales of EBM clones in the 1990s, these became the industry standard for both business and home use. This growth was accelerated by the unveiling of Microsoft's Windows 3.0 in 1990, succeeded by Windows 3.1 in 1992 and Windows 95 in 1995. The introduction of these operating systems, coupled with Apple's inability to produce a successor to the Macintosh operating system, led to a decline in the Macintosh's market share and Apple was on the verge of bankruptcy by 1996. Apple's fortunes reversed when it acquired Next in 1996, and Steve Jobs returned in 1997, causing Apple's revival. Apple regained its profitability with the release of Mac OS 8, Power Mac G3, and the iMac targeting professional and home market. The iMac sold millions of units due to its revolutionary design, omitting legacy devices like a floppy drive and serial ports and replacing them with Ethernet and US connectivity. Mac OS X, Apple's long-anticipated next generation, Mac's generation Mac OS based on next technologies, was launched in 2001, affirming Apple's successful comeback. Beginning from the 90s, personal computers underwent significant advancements, with most new models featuring UCF ports for easy connectivity to various devices. Meanwhile, consumer machines started to come with DVD players. The turn of the 21st century saw an increase in the integration of UCI ports into everyday devices. The computer market witnessed robust competition and significant growth during this period. Notably, in 2002, Hewlett Packard notably became a dominant force in computer technology through strategic acquisitions. After purchasing Compaq, who previously acquired Tandem Computers and Digital Equipment Corporation, Heap rapidly grew into a major player in the production of desktops, laptops, and servers for various markets. The early 2000s were defined by developments in processor technology. In 2003, MEBM launched their 64-bit based microprocessors, Opteron Athlon 64 and PowerPC 970 respectively. In the following year, in response to AND's success, Intel released updated versions of their Ixion and Pentium 4 lines initially prevalent in high-end systems. 64-bit processors steadily replaced 32-bit processors in consumer desktop and laptop systems by about 2005. The year 2004 also marked a significant shift where IBM sold its PC business to partially government-owned Lenovo Group from China. 
As a result, Lenovo inherited IBM's successful ThinkPad laptop series. Advancements continued into the 21st century, with Wi-Fi becoming increasingly popular as many people installed their own wireless home networks. LXD monitors replaced SCART monitors, bringing sharper and brighter displays to users. Furthermore, the 2000s saw the introduction of multi-core processors and flash memory, previously available only for high-end industrial use, into mainstream consumer technology. By 2008, the MacBook Air and ACI IBC EEPSC emerged as laptops reliant solely on flash memory for storage. Additionally, the invention of local area networks, LANs, particularly Ethernet in the late 1970s, allowed PEHEs to communicate with each other and shared printers, further expanding the capabilities and uses of personal computer technology. In a groundbreaking movement in 2005, Intel and released the first ever dual. Core 64, bit processors, Pentium D and Athlon 64H2, respectively. Multi-core processors now became programmable using symmetric multiprocessing, SIM EI techniques, an approach dating back to the 1960s. Fast forward to 2013, the scene witnessed the launch of Axeon Phi extension card comprising a whopping 57 XED6 cores, available at $1695, averaging at approximately $30 per core. The same year also marked the release of CC Express, swiftly becoming the most prevalent bus in mainstream C-compatible computers. This era also records the downfall of Silicon Graphics Desky, a leading thread business once boasting annual revenues shooting from $54 million to $3, 7 cents billion between 1984 and 1984 and 1990 but eventually declaring bankruptcy in 2009. The introduction of three capabilities to CTs and clustering of Linux, and BSD-based PACES capability of assuming larger SKI server responsibilities dented SKI's core market share. Notably, in 1994, three XG employees founded 3DX, creating the Voodoo Graphics Extension Card, relying on CI to bring about affordable 3 graphics to PCs. By the end of 1996, Edodrom's cost witnessed a significant reduction, and the card was composed of a dock, a frame buffer processor, a texture mapping unit, and 4M of Edodram. Notably, this 3 graphics provider was procured by NVIDIA in 2000, which in turn saw its revenues spurting by 96 in the same year. In the realm of DRAM, the Keem 40 8-2000 synchronous DRAM was unveiled by Samsung in 1993 gaining dominance by 2000 due to its superior performance. Simultaneously, Dr. S-DROM was introduced in 2000, offering higher data transfer rates owing to stricter control over signal timing. In December 1996, Advanced Configuration and Power Interface, ACFI, replaced the antiquated AM, multiprocessor, and plug-and-play BIOS specifications. AXB networked the components and their functions for the OS kernel via system firmware with embedded virtual machines for managing operations. AXB's first-generation hardware had several issues, leading Windows 98 to limit its AXB compatibility to an approved list of systems. Later, in 2011, Intel commenced the commercialization of the Trigate transistor. This phenomenal design originated from Shenming Hu's FinFei 3 structure designed in the 1990s. Drawing the period to close, between 2016 and 2017 Intel, Smok, and Samsung rolled out nanometer chips using advanced through silicon via in high bandwidth memory, AEM, a successor of deep strand. These 10 NIM scale chips spotlighted quantum tunneling as a significant phenomenon at this scale. From 1977 to 2001, the distribution of personal computers, PCs, leaped from 48,000 shipments to a staggering 125 million. By 2002, there were half a billion PCs in operation, with a billion individual units sold globally since the mid-1970s. The majority, 75, were used for professional purposes, and the rest were dedicated for personal or home. Use the distribution of C-types revealed that 81.5 of the shipped units were desktops, while laptops accounted for 16.4 and servers only 2.1. Geographically, the U.S. dominated the PC market, receiving 38.80-394 million of the global shipments. Europe followed with a 25 share, while the Asia-Pacific region, identified as the fastest-growing market as of 2002, had secured 11.7. In terms of household penetration, almost half of Western Europe homes had a PSC, 
followed by UK homes at 40, and a significant increase compared to only 13 in 1985. The transition from desktops to laptops became apparent in the third quarter of 2008, when laptops outsold desktops in the U.S. for the first time. By June 2008, there was one PC for every seven people worldwide. The mature markets, including the U.S., Western Europe, and Japan, were home to around 50-80 of the global C. EI, in 2008, the prediction was that out of 180 million Cs, 16 would be replaced and around 35 million were to be discarded, revealing an annual growth rate of 12 in the installed base.